Hi guys, welcome back. So it's only one day, one trading day left before the new day. Something that we have been looking forward to for quite a few months, but I am getting a little bit worried because I guess I have been looking forward to this day for Neo to announce some good news, to release a good model, to extend the product line, the lower range sedan, what we have been looking forward to. Hopefully it can give a good boost to the share price, but at this point it's not looking good. I'm not trying to scare you or create panic here. I'm just seeing something and I want to give you a heads up because you know I am a Neo Ball. Back then, before the whole DD delisting thing happened, I really thought Neo would be forming a triangle and the share price should consolidate within this range until the institutions might be accumulating enough shares and maybe one catalyst can make a breakout like Neo Day for example, which was what happened last year, right before Neo Day was forming this pattern, right? And at that time also, there was some delisting news going on, but I guess the difference is back then, people really thought since it was the end of the presidency of Donald Trump, so it should be looking much better after the new president, take the lead and repair the relationship with China, right? But that didn't happen, so this year it's entirely different landscape. At first it was forming a triangle until this happened. Now this trend has been completely broken on this day, December 2nd. It was a Thursday in the afternoon that all the EV stocks just started to fall so bad and also the Chinese stocks. It was in the afternoon when the news said the SEC was doing the final amendment on the PCAOB law about the listing Chinese companies. So this news completely broke the trend. And also the next day, the Friday, it was the delisting news of DD. So one after the other, the uptrend was completely broken, the range of consolidation. Everything happened during December 2nd and December 3rd. Now, I remember seeing the unusual option back then on December 2nd. It was a news at noon time at 12. It says someone with a lot of money spent a huge bearish position on NEO. We noticed today when the big position showed up on the public available options history. Whether this is an institution or a wealthy individual, we don't know, but when something this big happens with Neo, it often means somebody knows something is about to happen. So on that day, the Bazinga's option scanner spotted 22 uncommon option trades for Neo, and it is not normal, and the overall sentiment is mostly bearish, like 60% bearish. So at that time on the December 2nd, the share price opened at 38 and was trading mostly in the range of 38 until the SEC's news and then it dived quite deep after that suddenly. So apparently no one knows who is this big whales, but the for sure thing is that they know something big. Either they know in advance that the SEC news is about this or they have insider news about the DD delisting. Either way, they've got good connection probably with both sides of the government. So I'm guessing it should be a big institution, the big short here, that has been shorting NEOs since the beginning of the month. They know something we don't. As retail investors, we have the absolute last chain of information. So there's no way we compete with news. And judging from the movement right now, it looks very much bearish, very much in a downtrend. Right now we are at the very critical support of 30. Even though today we did not make a new low, we made a new low yesterday, but we did close at a new low. It has been the lowest closing for the last 52 weeks. Luckily, we have closed right slightly above 30. That's slightly good sign, but really not enough. Aftermarket already dropped below. And if we break the 30 support, it is not looking good at all because this support has been so critical that it was supporting Neo for a whole year. Every time it touched 30, it would always bounce back up, indicating that between 30 to 40, it should be the price the average price for institutions to accumulate their shares for the past one year, right? And if we break this 30, that means everyone who bought in the last year, including retail investors and big institutions, 
would all be trapped, all be at loss, and they would be looking to cut the loss the moment they have opportunity. So right now, I don't think even Neo they can save Neo now. In fact, it's probably a chance that would be taken by some hedge fund or smart money to take loss if it has any bounce back up. So we need to be watching out for that. So it's a possibility that no one wants to see, but it's not impossible. So I want to give you a heads up so you're prepared for something more scary to happen, right? Now, in this case, we should be looking at the next support. And I think the next support would depend on the target price for the shorting position of these big whales, right? Right now, I am looking at 24. I know it looks very scary, but it's possible. Let's see. Now, 24 was the gap up last year, October 14, when the whole EV sector and NEO started to jump. You can see on this day, it was a huge gap up and it was never filled after that with really big spike of volume as well. That means a lot of the institutions started to establish their position in NEO. For some reason, they were getting really bullish at that time probably driven by the anticipation that Joe Biden would win the presidency and he is very much pro new energy. So this gap up that was so strong was never filled. And I think during the fall, it should act as a good support because Neo was running up quite fast last year. So in between, there weren't many support levels or many platforms being formed. At that time, a lot of big money were buying like crazy regardless of the cost. And then retail investors follow later and form a great hype cycle. And now the dream was kind of smashed by the whole politics, global situation. So now we probably might revisit those levels again. Another thing is that if we draw a trend line right now, we can see that NEO has been falling with this trend. It was mostly moving in this downtrend for two weeks. And it is not surprising to see it jump to this lower range again for support. It happens to be at the 24 level in just a couple of dates. So two possibilities, okay? If Neo Day is somewhat expected because a lot of the media has been reporting the leaks, right? So if everything goes smooth as expected, we might see some of the sell the news action, especially after Neo Day, there might be no more looking forward anymore that has been holding the share price above 30 support. And I think maybe some retail investors and hedge fund also got into Neo in the past few days for the Neo Day event, speculating or betting that it might be crazy good news out. So if everything just works as expected, we might see a uh, quite a bit of a sell off after that. But if there is a crazy good news, a massive catalyst that no one expected, then we probably would have hoped to shoot the share price back to the same range of consolidation for one year. So we still have hope. So something you need to watch out for, I'm just sharing my opinion so you can still have time to decide tomorrow as the last trading day before new day. These big wells are so sneaky. There is no way we can compete with them. It is up to you if you want to try to compete with them by playing smart or by being a diamond hand. So whatever things happen cannot shake you off. But the worst thing you can do is to think you are a long term investor, but end up cutting loss at the worst moment by panic selling. OK, because obviously these big wells know a lot before us. They've got good connection that we cannot compete with. And judging from what they're doing, it seems like there might be some crazy bad news for Chinese stocks in the coming days. I have no idea. <laughs> But there's no surprise that there might be some final shake off. And also, <laughs> seems like Tesla is breaking support. Since two weeks ago, I've been giving a heads up that Tesla might be getting into a longer range of correction or consolidation. That's why um, maybe the whole EV sector would be taking some pressure. I thought Tesla would not have a huge dip until Elon Musk had finished selling all of his shares that he intended to sell. So then people would start to believe that, oh, he's finished selling off. 
So the major pressure for Tesla share is finally over and we can buy the dip again. That's what the retail investors would think. And then they start to buy in the dip. And this is usually when the share price might take a big dip. Last time I checked, I believe he had sold most of his shares already. Something to watch out for. So the S&P 500, even though we had a dramatic turnover yesterday, the resistance is still at 470. We haven't broken new high yet. So we might still be consolidating before making a new high or the center rally. Right now, the support is at 463. So if we don't break the support, it should be still okay. If it's broken, then you gotta watch out for a bigger sell off. Even though the US stocks are at near all time high, a lot of people have been saying it's a bubble, it's gonna have a huge correction, but I think it won't peak until some of the FANG stocks that have not rallied finally break out to make all time high, like similar with Tesla and Apple. For example, Amazon is still somewhat in the consolidation range for one and a half years. So it might have a breakout and rally. Similar with uh, Facebook, Meta. It hasn't made an all-time high with the uh, S&P 500 with Apple and Tesla yet. So I think the market would not peak until Facebook and Amazon follow the rally, probably. And in the similar logic, we all think the HSI have been dropping so low already that it should reverse soon, right? But again, we see a lot of the mega caps has been falling like trash or penny stocks like Alibaba and Xiaomi, etc. Right? But there are some stocks that have not made new low yet following the recent drama of the delisting. The low of JD was back in July. So probably JD would still need to follow the dip further like the rest of the Chinese tech giants until we see the reversal of the HSI or Chinese stocks, right? Because it's not desperate enough. When these stocks are making exceptions like JD, like NEO, they are making exceptions that are not crashing as hard as Alibaba, right? So it's still giving some people hope on Chinese stocks. Maybe it's not desperate enough like this. And usually it's not until most people give up with full desperation, then the situation might have a full reversal, right? This same logic apply to Meituan. So even though this year we have been seeing Baba like this, <laughs> Meituan is still somewhat staying strong. Recently, we have been seeing it breaking the support of this trend line. You see this trend line that has been supporting it just like JD. So it's possible that it might start to follow more of the dip of the rest of the Chinese stocks. So then we have more desperate and fear. This is why I am anticipating we might have another final shake that is quick and deep dip. So most people cannot take it anymore. And it could be some other black swan driven by something that we cannot think of right now. Who knows? So that is my thesis or my opinion or just a prediction that the US won't peak until Amazon and Facebook follow the rally and the Chinese stocks won't reverse until we see Meituan and JD start to fall with the rest. Okay, I hope you find this information helpful. I'm just trying to give you a heads up because I find it so weird that throughout this year, there are times I call out the dip that things might rebound. And there are times I give you reminder or heads up, but people don't care. They just always blame me whenever Chinese stocks drop whatever stock it is. Just whenever the Chinese market falls, I somehow become the reason and the place they come back to vent. So now I'm giving you a heads up again. I hope we can see things more objectively. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, please give me a big like and write me a great comment. And I'll see you in my next video. That's it, guys. Hope you can find my videos helpful. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and give me a big like. Thank you.